Hello, welcome to Tech Tidbits today. I'm filming on my RealSense camera, so you can see it looks like a, a bad Photoshop edit, and it kind of messes up a little and glues back, you get the background. I've got the Razer Stargazer, I think it's called. I did a video on it a while ago, and uh, it's, it's pretty cool, but as you can see, it's not perfect. You can just overlay a background, like so, so I'm kind of in hell. The fiery background going on here. So now you can be playing a game, and it you know, that, that's a lot better. It's actually, I would not mind using that all quality wise, just when you blow it up full screen like this, it's not very good. Now today's video I'm gonna do is on my A7R2, which is this camera here with this beautiful Batis lens on it. And I thought I would, cause I've had this a year, I thought I would go through the menu system on it. Cause this camera is like a warren. It's really, everything's kind of hidden. There are some functions that are not even in the menu system, which is really strange, you have to go and I customize them. So I'm a complete amateur with photography. I've just worked up to this camera over like 12 years of having SLR cameras and moved to this mirrorless one mainly for its size when I've got this quite large lens on it. Uh, so I'll go through from like my point of view what I use. Obviously it won't be stuff that really helps you in a studio or in you know professional situations but most of the stuff I use uh, I'll take you through. Any comments anything you know more about this camera it'd be great you know I've had this like a learning video for everyone to put them in the bottom uh, and I'll try and index the video as well so if you are just looking for a very very specific functionality you can just jump to that bit in the video okay so you've got me out the way of your main screen which is always good and I've got a little bunch of crap I've set up here uh, with a camera pointing around the camera's on a really unstable little mount you can here but, uh, so we'll shake around a lot, but it'll do for what we want to what we want to do. So you can see you've got like a little uh, through this. Now it's not a normal micro mini HDMI. I don't know what they call it. So you have to look if you're going to do this with your camera to get the right cable. But I've got this into an Ava Media capture card, so I can see the live footage. You can just get the HDMI screens, plug it in. That's what a lot of people do. So if you're in a studio, if you want the the screen live feed, you can do that. Now you're not going to be able to see the menu at the moment, so I have to go on to like the down into HDMI settings and switch that to HDMI info on. Now that helps me a little bit because I can look at the screen then and talk, but I might just take myself off in a minute anyway. So now you can see the menu, and we can quickly go over. Hopefully, this will show you everything I'm going to see. Yeah. So if we if we jump back into the the regular viewfinder, then it, this is basically exactly what I see, and you can see I can toggle through. So I'll uh, overlay, overlay the camera now, basically the, the basic functionality I have, I generally use it in manual, um, the back button, the, the dials I've got to the right on the main dial is ISO, then the middle button is like your OK button, and it, it, everything changes on this camera depending on what mode you have it in. So if you have it in uh, shutter priority, or aperture priority, or if you have it in P, which is like automatic or movie mode, your panoramic mode, all your menus will change and everything will change depending on so it really is a warren of of functionality. It takes a long time to get used to but I actually I've heard a lot of people don't like it have come from Canon and Nikon because they I think their menus are more focused around shooting stills, you know, with all functionality. And Sony have done this camera more as a camera that's multifunctionality, so even if you are doing video you can set it up quite easily and you careful you're looking for stuff and you can never find it it's because you're in this in a different mode but there is also functionality that you just won't find in the menu it's really strange and I'll, I'll try and go into that if I'm prompted by it so at the moment I've pretty much got a lot of the stuff turned on so you can see it on all the the on-screen display using the the back button we can press up and toggle through you know so we, that will show everything that how the camera is set up uh, this is basically just some of the, at the bottom I've got like shutter speed and aperture and they'll scroll through if I change, like I'm changing the shutter speed there as you can see. And this uh, on the bottom right you've got like your exposure level, so the sensors are picking on that. Top right battery, next to that you've got what video mode you're in, and then the video ratio, how many pictures you've got roughly on your card and what mode I'm in. Uh, so let's quickly look at the menu. Now the menu is basically these six tabs at the top and using your back button you press up and down so you can jog, jog down through the, the specifics there or go right to the top and jump through the categories. So if we, you've got those six and in each one you've got these pages so you see the numbers one to nine. So what, if we push left or right any time on those we'll jump through the pages, up and down we'll jump through the, 
So that's quite simple as well. And you'll see some greyed out here. These are the ones that, for some reason, something's set. So it won't allow us to change that because you need to change functionality that's related to it. Sometimes it just disappears. So if you've got this far and you don't have this camera and everything to get it, it's probably not the video for you. It's a very niche video, but it's just something I thought. I've had the camera for a year and I find it quite complex. You know, you learn and learn and learn it. So it's just a good thing to go through and hopefully I'll help someone. So we'll start on the top category on the first page and we'll just run through it. We'll run through all the pages of options and then we'll go through the categories. And I'll try and index in the description uh, all the functions. So if you're looking for something specifically, maybe you can just jump straight through to, to, through to that. Okay, so the first one's a good indication. The first one's a good indication of what I was saying before, like it's grayed out. And it's grayed out because of the image size is only re relative to uh, JPEG. So because we're set on RAW, if I just take that down to fine, we can jump back up and we can see, we can change the megapixels on the on the actual image size for the JPEG. And if we put that back into RAW, it'll, it'll gray out again. Aspect ratio, so this is just related to the video. So you actually see borders appear on your video when you have it on 69. I just live in 69 generally because that's the typical ratio for most uh, output these days. The quality, we can shoot RAW, RAW and JPEG. And then if we go below those, those are just all JPEGs of different uh, quality. And then the above option that I showed will like, allow you to choose uh, the actual megapixel size. Now, the, this was a new option they added after it was released. So it's compressed or uncompressed RAW. So I guess if you're going to use for the, the, the largest quality possible is raw, uncompressed. And your file sizes will roughly go from 50 meg in compressed to maybe 80 plus in uncompressed. So it's pretty huge and it's hard to manage and this camera is not super fast. So the card writing speed itself is not super, super fast. I'm part of that, so I'll try and... Uh, so again, we've got grayed out options here and this is because on the, the actual mode select button on the top. So you've got two... two metallic rot uh, rotary dials on the top and the one uh, the inner one is actually mode selection so we can switch that to panoramic which is just basically a, a messed up square and you can see top left it's gone to that shape that's the same as what's on the dial we can press menu and we can go back in and play with the panoramic so this is more something you'd be related to off a phone camera option or somewhere you just drag it from left to right we can go down and it'll say, do you want to pan from the right to left, left to right, up and down, you know, so you can mess with that, it's pretty basic. So sheet two is, this is video, so we can, we've got four formats, and the formats define what resolutions it's going to be in, what frame rate it's going to be, and what codec it saves it at. So the top one is the utmost, the higher ones, and when we, it, whatever you choose in the top one, it'll affect the next one down to what options it gives you. Jump down into XAVSS HD, and then it will give you the high frame rate mode there. So you can do 20. All they're all 50 megabits per second for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the codec. Uh, they don't have it stored in a higher. But that's where our higher frame rate would be. You can go into MP4. You know, and it really reduced the file size that it's going to record at. So it really include it increases your workflow at that. You can see we get all the way down to 720p at 6 megabits per second. 30 frames per second so that would be a really good mode if you're going to do a, a lot of video and you, you, know, you know the downstream result is just going to be really low quality then uh, you still got you know that's good enough for Instagram or Facebook or whatever you may want so I'll pop that back into 4k uh, one thing to note here is if we if you're doing the export like I am at the moment down out through the HDMI cable is that you need to go to your HDMI settings and you have to make sure this is not on the 4K. Because if you've got this, I guess if you're using stills, it's okay because it will export at 4K. But if you are using, if you want to record video, it will just lock the output. So if I, if I switch that out to 4K, then it will give it you. We're not going to be recording on it, obviously. But if I press record, then we're gonna, it's going to mess the output up there. So stop the record. Hopefully it comes back. There we go. So I'll change that and I'll force it to. Well, you can even put it on auto. I think auto works just as well, or 1080p. And now we should be able to go in there and press record. There and it does work. work. Yeah, we can see I can focus in and out there. So, so that, that, that might be a problem you're having if you're trying to 
if you're trying to export through HDMI and do record at 4K at the same time, it doesn't work, doesn't do it. So we're on page two of 400. So a dual record will basically, it will save you a lower quality MP4 video. So you can do a high quality video on MP4. And the way that's used really well, if you're gonna use a video editing that allow you to choose two videos, two quality videos, so you can edit with a lower quality one, then it'll supplement the, it's like a sacrificial video, if you will. And then it'll supplement the higher quality video when you go to render it. I think Premiere can do that, but it kind of does it automatically itself. Uh, drive uh, on this camera is a good idea here with this setting is to show you there's various ways sometimes to see different functionality so if we go and press the FN key on the back and people may have customized their cameras a bit different and it's great just to customize them however you want you see it comes up with uh, all these quickly accessible functions and uh, so we can go through them and the one on the far left upper is the drive mode and there we can choose, we can say we want like continuous shooting, we want delays, uh, bracketing, uh, that's bracketing with exposure, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of different modes there and just get out of that and go back. So the drive mode is just the same and it actually takes you to the same menu if you click on it. So we'll leave that on single. Again, we've got bracket shooting. If you're going to do things like uh, high dynamic range pictures where you're going to have several pictures and compose them together, that's where you would use bracketing. I'm not going to go into the functionality of these things too much, just try and show you where they are on the camera and a little bit of how they work maybe. Uh, flash modes, so I don't have, the, the, the A7 cameras don't have a built-in flash like the you know, Nikon D800 would or something like that, if, you know, an alternative uh, camera, so you basically are talking about, I did it, I, if you put a flash into the shoe and it's you know connected by a cable or remotely connected then you can control this and control the modes, but really didn't need to go into these details. Flash compensation as well, red eye reduction is not going to work, there's no flash, but you know what this is from any kind of camera. Focus mode, again, that is something that if we press the function key, we've actually got them in here. So we'll go through and we've got DMF, AFC is the main one I use on video, AFC or manual. And then we've got all the different focus modes here. And if you are if you are in video, you only get the AFC or the MF or the manual focus. Focus area is the same, so we, this we could choose, you know, what kind of area we want to focus or what kind of selection we want to use to focus on different areas. So we've got zones, wide, middle, got flexible, dynamic, expandable spot, and then lock on where it'll track stuff. Go next page, so it's more in depth for focus settings, how you want to control when you're, when you're focusing, how you want to change the spot. You can use your wheels to move the flexible spot up and down, left and right, things like that. Uh, autofocus illuminator, so that will basically make the, the scene a lot brighter, so it will focus easier on a spot when it's dark. So you'll see, if you have live effects turned on in your on the on the screen, it will basically brighten up the whole scene in front of you, and then it'll help it lock on. Now, autofocus drive speed is great for. I mean, if you're gonna be shooting stills of things really fast, it's great to have it on the faster setting. So it'll lock on faster and you'll be able to you know, shoot quicker. Uh, and slower would be better for more video. So if, you, if you're going to actually record when the thing's taking focus, so they've got like a tracking focus or something, then you put it on a slower mode maybe. And uh, the sensitivity is kind of similar if you have it on like pre-autofocus. Rather than it just jumping all over the place when you're doing video, it will be a lot more, uh, a lot less sensitive doing that. Now some of these settings, they're only enabled as well when you have lenses, like non-supported lenses, uh, sorry, non-e-mount lenses. And you can go in and you can, sorry, you can go in and you can compensate for the lens, so you can change like a, depending on the lens, uh, depending on the exposure, or, I don't know what exposure step does, and I read about it, and it kind of said it's always on free regardless what you said it in certain scenarios, so. I expected it to be on the wheel at the top when we changed that. ISO is pretty obvious, so we can, uh, you know, the lowest we can go is 100 physically, and then the rest of them are like uh, synthetic modes, I guess. You could just leave it on auto, that's kind of like changing your mode, so uh, if you always want the, the ISO to be, uh, to try and match the exposure sensor. Okay, ISO auto probably doesn't work because I'm in manual, so if we change that to, Shutter, uh, so P, 
So here we can go in and we can set the shutter speed like minimum. So if we're going to control the shutter speed automatically, say if it's for video and you're shooting at 30 frames per second or 60, you can lock that and it won't push the shutter speed below that. So that's a really good function. Metering mode is where the uh, the sensor of the for the exposure is located. So you can change that. Uh, you can have it different areas or just in the center or wide. So if you just if you're looking at something that's in the shade, for instance, and there's bright sun glare all around it, you don't really want the exposure to be metered from that area, so you can just change it to suit you know, whatever the scenario is. The camera doesn't really understand the specifics all the time. Uh, white balance, so you've got your presets for white balance. You can go in and do custom colors, and you can choose a color card and things like that. Now, DR, I don't know what this is. I really don't. I've not done, I don't really like HDR photography if it's to do with that. Uh, maybe I'm not. If you know what that one is, give us a shout. Creative style is what you would expect from a, an automatic color profile. So you can go in there and like natural is normally flat. If it's bright, you know, as you would expect, you can go through those. Now these are not to be confused with the recording styles, like picture profiles, because they are very different. Uh, say if you wanted to do like a flat S-log mode, uh, we'll probably come on to that in a bit. I did a video on these, sampling them. I'll put it on the end if I remember. And it, I've got samples of like the dog and fire going through different modes, so you can see those. 